So um, I'm going to call the Amherst Town Finance Committee meeting of Tuesday, April 30, to order at five minutes after two, noting that we have a full complement and uh, one additional member of the council present. So we're still at less than a quorum of the council. Um, and uh, I want to just jump right into things. And uh, what we're going to try and do is to um, see if there are any further comments on the committee appointment of non-council um, resident members. And um, I think where we last were with that, Kathy did some revisions based on our last conversation, which were sent out to you promptly in an email. And, and then Lynn did some revisions on that. So um, if people need me to, I can forward her on, on list of qualifications. She did some further edits. She, she sent them to all of us, but I can forward them to you if you need them to. Let's see, make sure we're all working off of the same document. Um, I'm just going to forward it. Yes. Okay. And so as you do that, um, then we had an additional item that was added to the um, agenda, which was to spend a few minutes talking about the goals minutes? section. Who's taking minutes? Good question. Do we have a minute taker volunteer? Okay, well, thank you. We need to figure this out because it's um, going to kill us in May if we have uh, figure we this out. We are 100 percent up to date on minutes, and Tonya can verify. So, Dorothy, if you also try to take minutes using this format, then it will be closer to final. So while you're, um, it's, on its, way. it's on its way. It's on its way. I just forwarded the minutes to you. It came. Yep. Okay. And just when people get that appointment, uh, when people get that, Shalini had, she sent an email to all of us uh, saying maybe we want to add a question of whether they've attended or, want, or watched any finance committee meeting as one of the questions. I like that. Mm -hmm. yeah. I like that. So we'll add that to is a additional interview question. Have attended or watched? Um, in the piece that um, looking at the wrong document here. Let me clarify something on that while we're waiting. It, do we mean finance committee meetings of the count of the council's finance committee? Uh, do we? Do you mean specifically since we started meeting, or would it be any of the finance committee meetings which could have preceded us? Yeah, precede. I mean, any. I, I any. don't know. It's up to us. Lynn, do, do you want to? Uh, I think we should ask it both ways. Okay. So the qualifications, um, should I, would it be easier to just read it, Grill, since it's really quick? Mm -hmm. uh, qualifications, selection of resident members shall be based on relevant experience, skills, policy, knowledge, with an emphasis on municipal and public finance across the appointees. The qualifications might include, in the three bullets, experience serving on finance committees or other private or public boards, training expertise in economic finance or policy, or experience interest in municipal finance. Ideally, resident members would represent a mix 
and I would just add the word of, a mix of experiences and skills, including knowledge of and beyond Amherst. Yep. Um, I'm, I'm editing as you talk. Yep. So are we um, okay with that for the description of qualifications? I'm fine. There's, there's nothing there about um, anything to do with the cross-section of Amherst life or, um, so it's, I don't know if you want that or not. This was what we agreed to last time. I just, I'm just having a thought now is what I'm saying. Cross-section of? Well, you could get a committee of people who are all very similar is what I'm saying. Um, and I, one of the, the our, quandaries that we have is that we're trying to get committees that um, can handle the work, but that also represent uh, a broader array of people in the town of Amherst. So I don't know how to word that one, but I'm just presenting that as something that when I listened to that list, I didn't hear. And I, I just saw a picture of a bunch of people who look pretty much the same. We do have a sentence which says that a resident would represent a mix of experience and skills, including knowledge of and beyond Amherst. Would that help? Yeah, that doesn't do what I think Dorothy's getting at, and that is that somehow we'd like this group to um, be representative of the population of Amherst. I mean, it's, it's something more around, um, you know, equity and inclusion. And for example, there could be somebody who had, who'd had experience with school issues that were not municipal finance, but with schools, which is where a lot of people make their entry into public service. Um, but that sounds kind of like it's, you want it more specialized than that. So I, I just feel it sounds a little bit, I do like that sentence, Shalini, but it does sound kind of specialized. And it's very easy to imagine a, a group of white men in a room. Um. Well, in the second point you were raising, we have experience serving on finance committees or other private or public boards. So that the question of school committee and the experience with schools is there. Okay. Um, but the question is whether we could use an additional sentence at the end saying, um, we all, uh, to the extent possible, we would uh, seek appointees who are representative of and well there's a kind of sentence and I uh, that used to be in job ads um, that, that would say something about um, comparable experience or uh, you know feel free to discuss um, other interesting or comparable experience that's not worded perfectly but I think you've seen the sentence is that a question, an additional interview question as opposed to a qualification? Well, a, a qual I'm afraid of somebody reading this list of qualification just feeling that they can't apply. It's, it seems, feels very restrictive. So could we do, <clears throat> wow, that's loud. Could we do a combination of what Andy and Dorothy said of having an additional sentence that clarifies our intention, that we encourage and welcome, you know, across uh, diverse, diversity in our committee. Uh, di diverse experience yeah. and um, knowledge. Yeah. Yeah. I think that sounds, it sounds a little bit more welcoming, that's all. So what do we want? What do we want the sentence to actually read? I'd let Shalini say it. It would just come at the bottom. Ideally, resi residents would represent a mix. So right after that, we could put something we welcome. Um, welcome. I'm, 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 I'm yeah, writing. Go ahead. No, I'm writing. You just dictate. Okay. Yeah. We welcome. Um, I'm not good at this. We welcome diverse. Uh, we welcome a diverse earlier? range of experience and perspectives or no. something? No, no, no. no. Well, I like was, that. You like that? I do. 
Because I do think we, we want a diverse come. range of experience and, ex and, and perspectives. I but think that's what we just said important. above. I think what we were trying to say is, all, because we already have that sentence, it would represent a mix of experiences and skills. So here, don't we want to talk more about? Um, well, I guess I like the word perspective more than the word skills. Yes. Okay, I have added, we welcome of a diverse range of experiences and perspectives. You know, I, you know, I, I think you're right, Dorothy, that typically job applications have it, but they are also saying, you know, you're trying to fit into a particularly entity in a group, and so we're we're giving you a signal about the work you're about, uh, the, the work you're about to have to do, you know, the group you're joining. So I, I think we're not being very exclu excludinary here. We're taking a broad range of any private public board training in policy uh, experience, you know, so it's a, it doesn't specifically say only monetary policy. So we take a pretty broad range of <laughs> So why, why don't we just say across the, uh, the last sentence in the first paragraph, across the appointees, uh, wait a minute, I'm sorry, the next one, at the, the end of the, ideally resident members would represent a mix of experiences, skills, and perspectives, nice. including knowledge of and beyond Amherst. That works. And just leave it at that and then add, um, a sixth question, and I um, also suggest that we um, allow Kathy to make a change in the order of the questions if she feels that if in an interview technique that um, the order of the questions doesn't make sense, but we are adding a sixth question uh, that about have you attended or watched on the Amherst Media a Finance Committee meeting. Can I also suggest in the second bullet, we say training ex expertise in economics, finance, comma, policy, or comparable areas. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. I think you'd, you'd hate to have find a, somebody that you really thought would be really great for the committee and find that Somehow we made the, the uh, requirement, the qualifications so strict and narrow that you couldn't bring them on. I think that helps it. We do say might include. So you already are, are giving up some. Okay. So are we set then with those changes? We've changed the first, uh, the second bullet. We have um, amended that last sentence. Um, and, and the sentence I've added is, have you attended or watched any finance committee meetings, question mark? This could include current finance committee or previous committees. So which word did I make it toward the end just, you know, as a wrap up? Okay. Uh, do you know, I, what, is this, they're not going to see these questions ahead of time, though, are they? Uh, I, I, be, I believe the OCA process has been yes, that okay. they get to see them before they walk in. Because they, uh, then that last question is really nice because it, encourages them to watch some to go, tapes. To go to and they might decide after watching the tapes <laughs> that they do not want to be on exactly. the committee, and it's good for them to find out. Is Sonia trying to say something? Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, Kathy, you've got all the notes this time, right? I do. I'm okay. Good. So, um, do we have a motion to adopt? Um, as our recommended qualifications and in interview questions, um, the draft as it stands. Uh, I, I so move. And I second that. Okay, this motion has been made seconded. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all in favor raise your hands. Seeing this is unanimous, 5 0. Uh, and uh, as far as I'm aware, our input is not really useful on any other aspects of the um, process for selection. Is that correct? Um, the only question before this group is 
the question of whether or not we feel it's important that the chair or designee of the finance committee actually conduct these interviews. Other than that, I think it's very important that we follow the OCA procedure that has been set forward at this time. So I will turn the question to my colleagues on the committee. So, so we, we discussed that and reached a conclusion. So Lynn, are you asking us to, do we want to affirm that we thought that would be a good practice? Yes, mm -hmm. I, I can provide a motion that we recommend that the chair of the finance committee do the interviewing or for the um, or designee or designee. or designee right you need that okay. the chair yeah. would designee that motion's been made second okay so we have motions been made and seconded any further discussion um, and as you vote on it um, consider strongly that I may suggest that we find a designee another member of the committee I may not feel appropriate to play that role and I want to have you vote with that understanding in mind. Um, any further discussion? All in favor of the motion, please indicate by raising hands. Again, it's 5-0, unanimous. Um, then we have an amended, can I, yes. Can I just say, at this point then, what's happening on Monday is that the, re the vote from the three committees that have discussed this will be put before the council, and the council will actually make the final decision. It's not, the decision as to who gets to do what is not a committee decision, it's a council decision. Putting and Dorothy, your minutes have to show we took a motion and we voted on it. Yes. Okay. Um, I, will we have a chance to discuss the question of of who can see who has applied. Um, I, I received a strong constituent letter that said something which I totally agree with, that um, public service is public service, and if you're too shy or to uh, let people know that you applied, then you're not strong enough to do it, and I do agree with that. At this point, the process is as follows. The group that is doing the interviewing or the selection or the recommendation to the council will see the CAFs or other correspondence that, so that means applicants. So in this case, if the council votes on Monday that the Finance Committee will, in fact, interview following the, CAF, the OCA process, um, then the Finance Committee will see the CAFs or letters of interest from the applicants. The, however, we cannot discuss them or deliberate or send emails or texts back and forth about them. Uh, we will see them. And then if um, we go this way or OCA goes this way, once the person that is designated to do the interviewing comes back to the committee with a recommendation, then the council members on that committee can actually say things like, gee, I looked at the full pool and find it interesting that this body that you're suggesting um, doesn't have as the, a balance of male and female. You can't say, you know, I think John Jones is a really not good decision. You can never bring a person's name up. You can only make observations based on the pool of candidates that you've seen. What has not been agreed to at this point is that CAFs for committees appointed by the council are seen by all council members. only by the committee interviewing them, okay? We will need some additional clarity on that because there are thing, questions that could come up that might lean towards identification of a person. For example, um, there's somebody who lives in town who 
who's a former finance director in a major community in the area, and uh, I don't think that that individual would apply, but if he did and then somebody said, oh, well, I looked at the thing and there's somebody on here who is a former finance director in a town and why, were, uh, why was that person chosen? Smacks towards identification. Yeah, you, you, you have to be very careful and ultimately what you can do is you can go back to the person that did the interviews and say, I really think you should reconsider you know, a better balance for this, or maybe some different experience. But, and unless the OCA process changes, this is where we are. Now, having said that, there are ways that the OCA process could change, but the timing of how we get these appointments all done, although with finance we have until, we have until June 30th, um, with two committees, the appointments by virtue of the charter are supposed to be done by um, June 3rd. So yeah. it's, we're kind of up against it for this. What I do think OCA has committed to is a serious review of, the, of their process once they get done with this round. And I would um, expect and urge, and would actually place it on the agenda, that the full council weigh in on that. I just need some clarity here. So let's say Andy or his designee interviews people. He or they choose a list of people. The not eight for five, but like if we have, we have four people that are coming on? Three. Three. So brings us a list of three. Am I correct? That's correct. Okay. And that is presented to us. We do not talk about any of them in any way. I'm just, I, I'm yeah. just kind of, it's, this is just feeling very weird to me. Okay. okay. <laughs> I can only say that you're not alone. Um, but I will also tell you that I've tried to, you know, I've spent more time at OCA meetings than any other committee except the ones I'm on. Um, the, in order for it to be an agenda item at the OCA meeting or at the Finance Committee meeting, there has to be an agenda and there has to be a memo. And the memo would have to include the names. So at that point, it is public as to who the individual is recommending. We do talk about things in public, but we have discussed, you know, executive session also, but. If we were going to have done an executive session for the OCA process, it would have looked differently. Mm -hmm. And I can, exp I can, I can uh, describe that for you. Let's just keep it on finance, okay? So we're filling three positions, all for two-year terms. We could have done the thing in executive session as long as we interviewed four or maybe five, but I think it's one more than the number of positions you're filling. So we would have had to public, we would have had an interview in executive session for people. One possibility that's that's the only way that's the only other alternative to keeping names private the other alternative would have been to interview them in public meeting and then at that point <coughs> since it was never stated as people were contacted nor was it ever stated in the CAF that the information might be made public we would have to go back to all individuals who applied and say, we now would move this to being public, and if the individual withdraws, we would just make note of that. Because one of the questions that some people have raised is, is it really true that people would, would withdraw? We actually have an example of someone who has been appointed that if their name had been public, 
they would never have allowed it to go forward. So, but you know that. So there's that option. So there's. Um, so, anyway. so my problem is I can't see anything wrong with interviewing a few people more than the positions. And when I think about my life, I, I don't remember any time in which I haven't known that more people were trying for something and we all, all weren't going to get it. I mean, that's, that is what one does. So I don't know why all of a sudden we can't do it. I mean, and interviewing four or five people is not that much worse than interviewing three people. It might even be better. The interview, um, and, and right now, the way the OCA process is, all people who applied and when contacted, and they are all contacted, um, and unless they at that time say, you know, I'm withdrawing, I've moved on, or we can't get a hold of them, okay? And that's happened in a couple instances already. Um, all people are interviewed, whether or not they're in a reduced pool. They're not in a reduced pool. They are in the pool that has agreed to be individually interviewed. I so. have to um, ask, we're venturing into an area that's not really the Finance Committee agenda, that's and exactly we have three right. other items that we need to get to, so I just didn't know how long we want to continue on the path. Um, the three additional items, there's one mm -hmm. that's not on the agenda at all that I um, have to raise with you um, in a moment. Mm -hmm. but. Uh, Town Council goals and the signed committee's document was one item I think that uh, was recommended that we look at, which um, goes along with a prior document that the council has looked at the, uh, mm -hmm. um, also the worksheet that's goals, activities, and timeline for 2019. Uh, so were you looking for comments, Lynn, on both? or we're principally on the uh, goals and signed committees list? It's really the, as, as the council expressed, when they looked at the goals, they said these are fine, but what really makes them goals are the activities and how we get there. And so the most important thing is, if you see, if you want to change in the statement of one of the goals, particularly as it relates to finance, that's great. What, and just let's talk about that. But more importantly, it's looking at the activities for under the ones that were assigned to the Finance Committee. Which is this document that's... That, that tells you which ones were assigned, and the only there's only two for FinCom? Yeah. Okay. Okay. But it's so, a bigger one. I have some comments on it, but I don't, um, and this is on the one that's a single page document called Town Council Goals and Assigned Committees. And for, um, I'll just tell you what my, my thoughts were on it and then see where the rest of you are on that page and then we'll go back to the longer document. Um, <clears throat> under budget and fiscal, it says establish an annual calendar, provide fiscal oversight, approve annual budgets. Well, the Finance Committee really isn't going to be approving budgets. It's only going to be recommending um, budgets because approval belongs to the council as a whole. So I was wondering about changing the word approve to recommend. And then, um, but there was an additional piece that says annual budgets I would have added and budget amendments mm -hmm. because um, there will be points in time when uh, the uh, town manager or finance director might come to us and recommend changes, um, even if it's just to move within substantive, within uh, functional areas. Is that still what, how you would anticipate, Sonia? I would anticipate that for this fiscal year, fiscal year 19. It all depends on how we vote the budget for fiscal year 20, whether I, and for the future. If yeah, because what it would happen is, is if um, a, an easy example is if there was a whole lot of snow and ice expense and we needed to move some money out of another budget that where we had under expended just to cover the snow and ice. That's a budget amendment. So, 
Uh, so we could put annual budgets and budget amendments. Can, uh, Andy, just, I, I agree with adding in the budget amendments. Remember, this is the council's goal, not this committee's goal. And FinCom then goes into the activities, and the activities is where you actually lay out what your annual thing would look like, including the point at which we recommend to the town council the budget to be adopted. So the goal for the council is, in fact, to approve annual budgets and budget amendments. Okay, so you, so the description is um, for the council's action, not for the committee's action. Exactly. And then the activities and dates under okay. this get to that. Got it. Then that takes care of the recommend versus approve issue. So the other thing that, um, and, and this gets into an item that you may have talked about at a meeting where I was absent, but there are many things that cover more than one committee, and there are a lot of things that um, have financial impact that will be discussed in other committees, and but we do have the financial impact side, which is what our responsibility is as a committee. So. Um, the fact that assigned committees don't get um, don't include finance is that a significant issue? That the assigned committee is the committee that is supposed to start out by filling in the activities and the timelines. Then once we have the whole set, if there's a point at which finance needs to go in to um, CRC and say, you know, at some point you've got to refer to the council. Maybe under budget and fiscal, the general one, we need to have a statement about and, you know, review and recommend um, all actions, all actions that include fiscal, with, with fiscal implications or something like that. So the, the the assigned committee is just the starting place. It's not the final place. Got it. So that addresses some of the issues that I was just wanting to make sure that we're, we were all aware of. I, I would like to bring up the regional dis school district. Is, is that all we do? Adopt assessment plans and budgets? Um, or does that need and budget amendments or does it need they do not normally during the course of the year do budget amendments but there is the uh, capital plan of the regional schools which we've already experienced working with once so it should so it should say adopt assessment plans comma annual budgets comma and capital plans and capital budgets? Or proposed capital expenditures. Okay. So and I'm not sure I understand what you're trying to achieve um, there. Is this, uh, this is one of the council goals? Yes. So it would, it would be adopting the annual budget and, and the cap, which, which in, well, it depends on what you're describing as an annual budget, the annual municipal budget or the overall town budget. In, in this particular one, it's the regional school district budget. In the one that we were discussing prior, it's the overall town budget. Okay, so I'm, so I'm still a little lost at what you're, the goal of the council would be to vote on all the budgets. So we say approve annual budgets and budget amendments. I think that should suffice and cover it all. Okay. So that's, but then we have a whole separate region. I, I see what you're saying. We have a whole separate regional school district, which could be subsumed into budget and fiscal. But we do have that whole separate thing about having an assessment plan. 
that we have to approve? The assessment method? Yeah, yeah. the assessment the method assessment. actually. Mm -hmm. Okay. That would be separate. So it's okay. just change the word plans to method. And the other reason I think I lean towards having a regional school district separate goal is because time-wise it's off cycle with the rest of everything. Mm -hmm. So right now, based on this, I've said regional school district dash adopt assessment method, annual budgets, and proposed capital plans. For the region, yes. And then the only other one that was assigned to FinCom is capital plan slash projects. And it, again, this is for the whole council. Adopt a comprehensive capital plan. The activities of getting to that is not simple, but that's the goal. Yes. I can't think of anything else to say. Tell me. Where, does, um, where do those uh, processes come in for how do we determine surplus land? And um, is, would that come to the Finance Committee to figure out the processes for that? And is that related here, that we need to come up with those processes? Land acquisition, et cetera. That's a very interesting question. I don't think it's anywhere in here. So, those are matters that will arise and get to this committee at some point in some fashion. Depends upon how it's funded. But, I mean, the, the um, ones that are coming up in that regard will come up through our review in, in May of the Community Preservation Act proposal because it is proposing three different pieces that are acquiring land. So as we review the CPAC recommendation, we will be addressing three three different land acquisition proposals. True. Um, underneath finance, the broad finance goal, in the activities, we have both JCPC and C CPAC. <coughs> so when we flesh them out, we could get to that. But does that cover the full set of acqui land acquisition, it doesn't. No, it doesn't because uh, um, the water uh, protection, for, for water protection purposes, the, with the water fund, we acquire a land and that happens not every year, but it's happened frequently enough that you could say it's regular. So we need a goal on land acquisition? And then, or we need to figure out a process where land acquisition is evaluated and approved. Now, sometimes that would include places like CRC, but it would also then come to the council for fi the finance committee for recommendation to the council as well. Right. So, is this is this something that can go under the general financial goal, which is budget and fiscal. Establish an annual calendar, provide fiscal oversight, approve annual budgets and budget amendments, and provide guidance for future fiscal years. So it would um, approve land acquisition. Yes. Um, I'm not sure all the all the um, the work that happens before it comes to me as a 
an appropriation order. Usually, I, I would say that Dave Zomick is the one to talk to about this because he knows the whole process up to it. I don't really see land acquisitions or orders until it, until it becomes a financial issue where, not an issue, but where the funding is coming from, how are we gonna fund this? Is it a grant? Is it borrowing? Is it CPA? Um, that's when I normally see it, and that would be part of the, in the past, we've always voted at like an annual town meeting or special town meeting. I don't know if there's gonna be a new process with the council that can vote this at any time of the year. So I don't really quite know how to help you out with this other than the financial part. But Dave Zomek, I'm sure, is the person to talk to you about this. So perhaps an overall goal for the council is called land acquisition and the statement is approve the acquisition of land. And then under that is this catch-all process. Okay. Yes? Since it's not just a financial thing. It's probably right because it's gonna depend upon what you're purchasing the land for. Right. So I'm sure there's a lot of meetings and a lot of discussion before that even happens. And land, it could apply to land disposition too. Yeah. Well, example. most of the land that we buy is usually through conservation or the water department, so. But it's most frequent. Mm. Yeah, but for example, if we went out to buy land to put a DPW on, probably that would come out of straight capital. Right, and then um, that would become one of the project costs, yeah. We also have to deal with the question of um, easements. When you obtain an easement for uh, uh, any purpose, most frequently being road um, realignment purposes, but also sidewalks or whatever. You have to uh, consider that the easement will need to be approved by the council and um, where you're placing that committee assignment. Okay. And we frequently will um, deal with it as a financial matter mostly because uh, it's a add-on piece to the Transportation Advisory Committee doesn't really get into those kinds of details. So as a committee, it usually falls into the financial side and it depends. Frequently we get, um, we don't have to pay for the easements, they're just donated, but it's not unheard of that we will pay for an easement. Right. So land acquisition, comma, disposition, and easements. Okay. So. Um, and then it would be approve the acquisition or disposition of land and property because East Street School was a property. Right. Our, our buildings. And, and easements, I guess. This is not our last shot at this, just by, just so we know. So, um, if you need to consult on further aspects, please do, but let's move this along so that we can get through um, two other items and uh, see where we're at then as a committee. Um, knowing that we have to go. One is that I just wanted to let you know that um, we may be in a situation that we did not anticipate. It is possible that one town could vote that they won't support the assessment method. And um, I think one of the things that we need to be clear about um, is whether or not if that happens, we would um, 
consider um, voting to raise and appropriate a greater amount of money for the regional schools or whether we would insist on um, reconsideration of the budget um, in order to uh, make sure that our amount that we have set aside for regional schools is adhered to. Um, and th this question has arisen because um, it would be um, important for the superintendent to know that prior to all of the remaining town meetings so that if the issue arises that uh, there's the ability to say that you cannot assume that Amherst will be able to raise additional funds. And uh, do, we, do you have any sense of the timing of when this is going to either it, yes, resolve this, itself or come back? The remaining town meetings are on Saturday. Okay. So by next week, we'll something yes. something will have happened. This is a yes. Was if we're going to give guidance, if if the council in any fashion is going to give guidance on this question, the guidance has to come from this committee. It has to come from this committee today. So, Andy, could you help us by um, sharing any previous experiences? that have happened like this and how it was handled in town meeting? Um, there is no prior experience to share because town meeting was sort of an ongoing enterprise that lasted many nights. And so by the time we got to regional school votes it would usually be after other town meetings had previously acted. Um, but before town, you know, we having a continuing town meeting, the town meeting hadn't dissolved. Um, I think that the uh, point that we would be making is, is that given the financial reality for the town of Amherst, both our projected revenues and the demands on our expenses, that we, um, as a town, would not be in a position if there was um, a change in the assessment method to appropriate more money than we've previously appropriated. Um, Andy, my question is, um, I don't know what happens if one school says no, then how is it funded and how do we know what's going to cost us more money? Well, if the assessment method is rejected, then um, it automatically goes to the uh, statutory method. And we know that the statutory method is going to be a higher um, appropriation request to the town of Amherst unless the budget is reduced as a whole. It, does it then also have to go back to the other towns because it affects them also? Or, or as I understood, if it goes back and we change our mind, Amherst changes its position, how much it could result in um, significant change to the total budget? Um, the process really has no precedent to fall back on. And so I think it's really a matter of providing a statement so that it be clear that Amherst is not in a position to just say, oh, well, we'll pay more money. You're, you're recommending that we make a statement that uh, Amherst will stick with what they have said and will not come up with more money if the, if the assessment method, method is changed. Is that correct? Yes. So let me try something. Let me try a motion. Okay. That the town of Amherst in consideration of our own fiscal position, will not be able to add additional money to our allocation for the schools for FY20. 
good? Just the regional schools. The regional schools. Is that a, is that a motion, Lynn? Yes, it is. Okay. Uh, Town of Amherst, in consideration of its uh, financial position, will not be able to appropriate additional funds for the regional schools for FY20. How's that sound? Sounds good. I, I've got it. Are, are you making a motion? Is she making a motion? I made the motion. I made the motion. Now it's just doing a tiny change to the wording. But it's and I accept much. that friendly amendment. Just, just read it again, then, so I should have it. Town of Amherst, in consideration of its financial position, will not be able to appropriate additional funds for the regional schools for FY20. Right. Got it. It's, uh, it's been seconded. <coughs> okay, Kathy's indicated a second. Um, yeah. I, th I yeah, think that, that, that was, was a, a it was a nod. Was I didn't a, know if the nod. Was a strong nod. Okay, uh, motion has been made and seconded. Any further discussion? Yeah, I just want to make sure we understand. Okay, so this is a statement that would be read at the town meetings that are going to take place this Saturday, and the implications are therefore that if one of the school districts does not approve. The formula or the assessment whatever assessment method it would the alternative is it would cost the town of Amherst more or the school district will have to cut its budget that is what we are saying obviously this is, it's it's going to ultimately be a little bit more complicated, but I think that we are trying to provide information to the other towns of our financial circumstances so that when they take the vote, that if somebody gets up and makes a statement, oh, well, if we vote, um, if we don't approve the assessment method, the Amherst will just cover the additional funds, mm -hmm. that we let them know that we're not in a position to, say, to, do, to do that. That's the purpose of this. It's providing that information that can be conveyed, if necessary, to another town meeting. Uh, I have to pause. Uh, do you need to call a meeting of the a council? Oh, I do. Uh, let me. There's not. I'm coming into the court. This is really nice for TV. Can you court? Okay. Uh, all right. So then, um, all all in favor of the motion, please indicate by. Did were you uh, wanting to say something, or were you scratching your head? Okay. <laughs> um, any any further discussion? All in favor, indicate by raising hands. Okay. So it's five to zero. Uh, unanimous. Um, and then the, the last item on the agenda so that we can uh, move this along and stick with our um, goal to try and do this in an hour is uh, to make sure that we all have had a chance to re-examine the schedule that is proposed for the Finance Committee for the remaining time. Did you have specific questions? And? Um. Obviously, some of these days have a lot of departments on here. So, we're the especially the May seventh meeting, we're probably going to be it's probably going to be a three hour meeting, and I just wanted everyone to realize that. Um, the other part is a lot of departments are asking me what the finance committee is expecting from them. Um, my feedback to them is for uh, for them to just give a quick overview of their department and what they do, what things are important to them. To, to speak in public and to let you know any 
significant changes in their budget and then allow to be there to answer your questions. Is that surfi not I don't think they need to spend as much time on what they do mm -hmm. since we've had our orientation, uh, although that was a while ago, uh, but more around, you know, significant changes since the budget shows three years. Mm -hmm. Am I correct on that? It shows the last two years and the proposed coming year. Right. It shows last year, the year we're in, and the coming year. So it's really to draw our attention to where there's changes. Mm -hmm. And the other thing, having had to write this for the town council uh, portion of the budget, just some of their thinking about activities, kind of goals for the coming year. But I wouldn't spend as much time on who they are. Okay. I was thinking like five minutes for the, the introduction and the changes. Yeah, I would yeah. I'd build on what Lynn just said, you know, very little time on who they are. Okay. Us looking at the three years, it might be also useful to flag the extent to which either in the past or when they look forward, there have been things that uh, were unexpected that either the budget we're looking for for the last year or two years ago came in lower than they thought because something unusual happened or came in higher than they, you know, that they have to budget a full year in advance. I, you know, so I want to look at the actuals, but get some sense of there will be fluctuations. You know, we, you know, so, so with that will probably vary by department because I know they can't vary a lot. Right. So you know, I know with public works we had one where a bridge required a change, but you know, just some sense of what comes along um, that can't be anticipated and how they deal with it. Yeah. Their trends. Yep. Well, um, just so I can point out, the bridge is a capital item, so that affects the capital budget, not the operating budget. So you wouldn't see a fluctuation in the operating budget for right. that. Okay. Yeah. And I guess if it had been smaller, they would have moved it around. You know, I don't have enough, I don't personally have enough sense on how much of a small margin is in each of these budgets that unexpected things, you know, have to hire another half a person, a janitor, or, you know, uh, it, it, that there's a, a little bit of a cushion either at the manager's level or within mm -hmm. the department. So just getting some sense of them talking about their budgets would be useful. So typically, um, the things that change is uh, staff turnover. So if there's a staff turnover during the year, you, you, um, or someone retires at a really high level and you bring somebody in at a lower level, there's usually savings there. Or if there's somebody's out on um, outside detail or, or workers' comp and there's more overtime in that year to cover those, those are the kind of things that you see mostly. We've had a couple of items where um, the fire department, the HVAC system went down in the North Station. So we approved them to having it fixed. It was paid out of the operating budget, and we just waited till year end to see if there was going to be enough excess from staff turnover or other items, whether we need to put more money in there. That's the budget adjust adjustments we talk about. We were talking about earlier that you would see. So typical. Those are the typical things that you would see. So, so when we see capital, that will all. For instance, when public safety presents, they won't talk about their capital projects. There is a line in the budget book just for information and how much the, that department has has approved or ha, was recommended in the capital plan, but they don't typically talk about right. their capital. And given where we are, I don't know if you're going to be able to do that this year or not, have capital included in the budget statement. Uh, to what we had uh, a couple weeks ago, because of the timing now and everything, they're more, it's more and more up to date. So whatever we had for information a couple weeks ago, that's in the budget book. So. Okay. Um, in, in my understanding it on May 23rd, we'll get the capital for FY20 as well as see we'll be able to looking at the two together so it's pulled out as sep it's pulled out as separate correct correct 
the actual capital plan will probably, will most likely be posted tomorrow along with the budget. Yeah, it, it's, it's, we discuss it on the 23rd. Right, yes. But we'll be able to see the whole thing. It's just, I guess your question, Lynn, is when DBW comes in, they're only talking about operating, they're not talking about. Right. Yeah. Right. yeah, for the most part, that has been the practice right. in the prior years. Because there's handled as separate motions and they're tied, they're tied to the actions, the capital plan is, all, is usually and will continue to be separate. Mm -hmm. um, the one thing that I was wondering about is uh, May 7, you've really loaded it heavy. And I was wondering if there was any section that could be moved to a different date. Uh, well, I know um, at least two of the departments had to have that date. This is um, the town manager scheduled these, so I'm going to put the blame on him. I can ask them, but I know there are some conflicts with some of them, and we finally got this straight, so. Why don't I just send a note to him um, saying that if there's any department that could, departments that could be moved to the general government date, that that would be. There's a lot in general government, there too. There is a lot in general government. couldn't move too much, but if you could move a little bit. I'll, I'll see what I can do. Basically, we have four meetings to review all of the budget except for capital. And I think that's one of the reasons why, Sonia, you're suggesting that we should be prepared to, for three-hour meetings. To dig in, yep. But we also need, I'll just say, is there any, does it seem balanced? Um, my experience has been that um, public safety and conservation development community services have been very time consuming presentations for finance committees more so than general government. Um, I'll have a discussion with the town manager later and ask him if he wants to maybe break up one of these departments. Maybe some of the public, some of the um, community services can go into the following week, maybe leisure services or something. But I think he was intending for all of these to be at least three hour meetings because they are about the budget and anticipating many so, questions. So we should go in our calendars and block three hours for all of them then? Yep. That was, yeah. So, you know, one thing that might change on general government, Andy, a question I had is, um, I know we've absorbed the cost of the council where we came on. I'm assuming that's been absorbed in general government somewhere, so I it's It's going to be in, govern in uh, government, and there is now a separate line item. Yeah, so just on a, you know, it will, I guess it won't be a long discussion, but just a, how have we been able to easily absorb that, and what does that look like going forward? It, in the, in this past year, or the year that we're in, it was just absorbed mostly through a salary or something that wasn't filled, and so there wasn't a separate light item because when the gut, when the town manager prepared the budget last year, it was for town meeting that was and had to be released in advance of the charter vote, and so it would have been not particularly politically wise to put in a line for town council when the charter hadn't even been voted on. So he did not come in with an amendment. Instead, he did um, use money that was in, um, if you will, general government um, that, you know, for instance, funded the six or seven months of our salaries and our attendance at the MMA. This year for FY20, in other words, next year, there is now a separate line item just for general for the town council. Uh, when the town manager and I discussed it, we agreed to a figure. I actually used a lot of the write-up on the goals and so forth to help write the narrative that was in there. And um, it covers salaries and basically attendance at conferences. Uh, if there's any other support to the council, for example, additional clerk kinds of things, 
that's actually in the clerk's budget. Just to be clear, I haven't seen the full budget. <laughs> I just sure. did my part. No, that's helpful. And, and, and I also yeah. talked with the manager about those things first when we started the count as we came on and then recently. Okay, so um, is there anything else that we need to discuss that you're aware of, Sonia, regarding the calendar? Um, no, I just wanted to make everybody aware that the meetings might be a little longer. Okay, so we will. And the other thing is that the budget will be released sometime tomorrow afternoon before the close of business. That's all I know. And that a lot of people have been working very hard to get it together. <laughs> yes. As always, including somebody who's right here with us. And thank you. Uh, so, I think that that covers it. We, as we've already talked about on minutes and have interrupted it on minutes and don't need any action from this body regarding minutes. Matters not anticipated. I've covered the one on the one I knew about, Lynn. Let me also just mention that on Monday, the town manager and possibly with Sonia, will be making a budget presentation to the council. There will be a period where we get to ask general questions. You'll have had the budget in hand for about five days, and I know you'll have memorized it. Um, but the reality is that is, it, it's really a broad discussion. It's not a um, time, we're not even gonna have public comment because we have all these other meetings scheduled we have, a public, uh, we have a public hearing scheduled on the budget. We have more meetings on capital than we have a public forum on capital. And only when it comes back to the council in June will we have any pu more public comment at a general council meeting, just to give you some sense of the rollout of this. We will have a motion at this council meeting uh, to refer the budget to the uh, finance committee. Um, I have a question. I received a, a mailing from um, the schools, and I look opened it in my computer, and it said it was 610 pages long. This is something that was sent to me this week through the town account. Um, and it was hard to read on the screen, so I would normally print something out. So you're not, you don't know what document I'm referring to? Not. Was it a more detailed budget or something? Oh, did, or, we, no, or may, did we get it from the superintendent's assistant? I'm blanking on her name. Um, w. Westmoreland. I'm sorry? Westmoreland. Westmoreland, hold on. And, uh, you know, I, I, since I can't really read it well from the screen and I'm not going to print out 610 pages, I'm just hoping there's going to be a s summary somewhere. George, do you know who sent it to you? I don't, I don't remember seeing it in my inbox, yeah. but I usually don't miss it. It was this past week, and it, it looked interesting, and I thought, oh, I would read that. It was a link to a Google Drive yeah. regarding the facilities of the schools. Yes, it listed uh, every single thing. It was the facilities use study of Amherst Regional Middle School and Amherst Regional High School. Uh, and it is in a Google Drive because it's so large. Right. See, I was interested because it was the middle school, and we're talking about uh, possibly having the sixth grade go to the middle school. So I thought, well, this would be no, something that would, to look at. The, the only one I know we got, we got a result of the space study. Or is, that, is that what you're thinking about? Yeah. It's called Amherst Regional Public Schools Facilities Use Study Final, and it's too large for a Google scan, and you can download it anyway. Um, 610 pages. It's Debbie Westmoreland? Yes. Okay. So it's the facilities use study for Amherst Regional 
Amherst Pelham Regional School District. So, um, Andy? Yes. I don't know what to say about it because it wasn't our is that document. Regional school? Is that it is, is regional schools, or I believe. Is that district, whatever the number is, that's just Pelham and. No, I think this is. Uh, it does. It does include the grade configuration. I'm looking at that. Yeah, this, this is the. I just opened it. Um, this is the JCJ Architecture. It was the space study of the school, and the reason it's large, Dorothy. If you click it and download it, what you'll see it's just very large, uh, beautiful pictures of the school and diagram. So it's not dense in words; it's dense in pictures. Well, there are. I did look in some of the pages, and it was lots of words and lines. Well, we might be looking at something like different. first floor, second floor, third floor. I mean, it was like every single thing. My question is, what are we supposed to do with it? It was sent to us as if it meant we needed to be aware of it and consider it. So I don't, I, nothing at this time, the time that it will become relevant to us is when we get approved <laughs> for the uh, MSBA thing and um, we move forward. And because it, the implications for this study is where does the sixth grade go? So does that answer your question because? So there's no immediate need is what you're telling me. Okay, so I you. have, since we're looking at schedules going forward, um, when we get out of the crunch of May and we've got some, a potential meeting in June, I'd like to revisit the interactive tool um, and just figure out if that works for June. I don't know whether that works for Sean in terms of doing it. The other thing I could offer is if we wanted to create a subcommittee to work to help. I sent kind of extensive comments on it, but I think we were trying to think of maybe it'll be available by the end of the summer, but I think it needs more work. But just revisiting not so much why we're doing it, but to get it in working order. So it could either be all of us, or we could say some of us, <laughs> and I'm willing to be a volunteer for that. I think it will be useful for the full council as well as for us, so it's just a, a being a, a reactive audience and not leaving him completely on his own. So it's a question of whether we use one of those meetings or whether we wanted to see you know, a couple people, um, not all five of us, uh, going back and looking at it with him. I think that what I'd like to though, hear is comments from the entire committee because we were beta testing on behalf of an entire council and um, each of us comes at it with different levels of experience with, fit, with spreadsheets and experience with um, the issues that are under it. Exactly. And, uh, so I think that we do need to start with a discussion of the group. Right, so that's what I just looked at when we have time to have a group discussion. It wouldn't be till June. So I wanted to suggest we pencil it in so anyone who didn't try working with it. I'm not going to go back to it again because I'm not sure how much. I know he got comments from some, but not probably all of us. Um, and I just didn't want to yeah. leave it just sitting out there. Um, so that's so why. Let's, I, so let's put it in for um, right now for June 11th. Okay. And. Uh, And if any of you have problems with any of the June dates as we're getting into vacation season, then you should s let us know. Anything else for this committee? Yes, as, as we look at June, we also promised that we'd look at the calendar for JCPC and also CPAC. Yes, and... Um, at least JCPC will be meeting probably during May for similar discussion so that they can provide impact, in, some input to us regarding observations because when the committee 
finished its work, that was the one thing that it didn't, did not get to do, is to think about the process going forward. And it, there are some things in the report that relate to committee recommendations, but it's not complete yet. And, w and we had had a joint meeting potentially for today, but it didn't work, you know, so whenever that happens, I'd, I'd like to know that schedule too. Yes, though I don't anticipate that the entire uh, Joint Capital Planning Committee would be present for yep. the presentation. Yep. No, no, Lynn has her hand up. Um, yeah, Lynn. We show in our calendar that May 28th is when we would develop our recommendation to the town council. And then we sh do not have a meeting right now on May 30th. But I just want to make sure that we're ready to actually make that presentation on June 3rd. And what, you know, we've never done this before, Andy, you're more experienced at this, but that's an actual, our, that's our time to bring it forth to the town. So, uh, looking back at the calendar for a second, yeah, yeah. no, I was just okay. making sure yeah, where the holiday falls in to the, the process. Um, the 27th is the official memorial day. Yeah. Mark, yeah. Memorial Day observed is on Mon oops, on a Monday. It's the twenty seventh. The twenty seventh is Memorial Day observed. Yeah. So the, the um, do you think we should at least tentatively see if we can schedule a May thirtieth meeting just in case, but with the yeah. idea that we would only have it if we're unable to complete our work by May 28th. Yeah. Is that agreeable to all? Yeah, I'm just yes. looking, you know, I, I've got a conflict on the 30th and the 31st, but I don't have anything on the 29th. You, you're probably suggesting, Lynn, the 30th just to give us two days. And the just 29th. to make sure because we're ready we for Thursday the presentation. Thursday usually, yeah, right. after, since we meet at 2. Right. It just, uh, I, and, won't, um, I definitely won't be here on the 30th, but I'm fine if you all. Okay, Kathy, I've got on the 29th the planning board Amherst media meeting. No, I'm just I'm just giving a heads up that you won't have me on the 30th. Yeah, I'm not here on the 28th. Yet. I'm sorry, what did you just say? She she said no. she's not here for either the Yeah, I'm not here on the 28th or 30th. I can try to do remote participation. I would urge you to think about remote participation for the 28th because the goal will be to try and um, s conclude all of our um, comments and recommendations regarding the, um, the, the proposed budget. My, my um, guess is that if we do a written report and want to have opportunity to discuss the written report, we would probably, that would be a major reason to at least tentatively hold another meeting open is a possibility yeah. and then we come back on the fourth and that's when we do the budget adjustments based on what our colleagues based on what our colleagues said to us so um so, Lynn just on the logistics so on the Third of June, when the council is taking up the budget, are they also taking up the capital budget on that day, or are they going to be waiting? Since the presentation on the capital plan is on the tenth, is for the council? Would the council be taking up capital on the seventeenth? I just want to know whether we're keeping them separate or pulling it's, them together. You're, you're asking a very good question. It sound, looks to me like it would be June seventeenth for the council. Okay. We, be, we need to have a public forum before we finalize our recommendations. Yeah, it, it, it seems like it if it's to get feedback from the public. So. Well, I have in my book the 17th adopt the budget. Is that what you're talking about? Yes. Okay. That's what I, I'm somebody. just saying that, that we will be, as a full council, talking about the 
a big part of the budget on the 3rd, which is why we've got to get the report ready, but then we're doing the capital forum on the 10th, so the capital part of it's got to wait if we're really getting public input on the 10th. Okay, so we are, I had, I think we had somebody just said that on June 3rd, it was, we we're doing a recommendation, or maybe it's written here. June 3rd is when we actually present our recommendation to the council. They then tell us what they agree with or don't agree with. Then we come back and make adjustments. And then at the June 17th meeting, we go to approve the general budget, but we also have to present the capital budget and get approval on both because unless we schedule an additional meeting, which we've discussed, um, that's our last meeting in this fiscal year. Okay, at this moment, I can't um, write this all out in the notes, so. Um, that's fine. I'm getting confused between the two different budgets and when the public hearing is, the public and forum you know, is. And Dorothy, whatever. these tapes are up two days later, so you can always watch it on Amherst Media. I don't mean that, I mean what I put down. What, whether there's the ch any changes or adjustments to the written schedule here, if I was to put them in the minutes. I'm only talking. Minutes. I can edit that for okay, you when you're you. done. Okay. So we understand that the budget constraints are that um, if we have any final comments regarding the budget, in our recommendation or want to review a draft, we need a meeting after the 28th and before the 3rd. And that would be an additional meeting that's not listed on the agenda. June 3rd is the presentation to the council, um, which could offer comments that require us to come back on the 4th to the 11th for discussion before the June 17th meeting of the council which would be the likely final action on both the budget and the capital budget that um, any modifications we may make to the um, capital plan after the public forum would probably be a June 11th item. Um, so any um, capital revisions that are within our power to make would be considered on June 11th. Uh, is it possible, this, this is a very useful with just the finance meetings, but without having the town council meetings integrated in here, uh, it's for me confusing. Can we make a schedule similar to this, but add the town council and some of the comments? So that we can see, we talk about this as a committee, then we, then I, we I recommend can, I, I can make the edit, if you get the minutes done, I can add whatever's missing. So that we have a schedule like this, but it includes town council meetings. Yeah, yeah, I think we can do that because I was writing. That's in fact what I was doing by pen as we were talking. Yeah. And um, as far as the um, review of the interactive tool, if it turns out that the 11th becomes too heavy an agenda to allow that because we would, that's the day after the capital forum, and before the, in the last meeting, before the June 17th meeting, then June 18th would be the date for the capital, uh, or for reviewing the interactive tool as an alternative date. Does that sound like a reasonable plan? Okay, anything else? Yeah, I, I just have a quick question. Who took minutes last week? Because I did get us, I got us, we the had a got combination of minutes last week, and Margaret took them uh, until such time as we dissolved the full council. And I have the notes to add to those, and I need to ask Margaret how she wants to do that. Okay, because otherwise, Sonia, uh, you can tell me, but I think we're completely caught up other than last week. I put everything in, went through them, and loaded them up into the thing called minutes final. Um, so you can let me know if I'm missing something. And Thank just, you, Kathy. I went back to the one I couldn't find anyone had done minutes, and I just watched the tapes and took minutes. So. I haven't looked in the share drive, but the only ones I were missing were from March 26th, which was you and Shalini. Yeah, and, and 
And and the, the March 26th is definitely done because it's okay. loaded up. And I think I, I've been sometimes sending them directly to you, and I can continue to do that. Margaret said as long as I put them in this minutes final folder, minutes approved, she'll just go get them. But you just tell me the way you want me to get them to you. Well, until I get training on SharePoint and where everything goes, it's probably best that you email it. I would just, I'll just keep emailing them to you. Okay. Yep. <laughs> Anything else? No. Looking around. Oh, motion I, to adjourn then? I just want to say I went for some training on SharePoint, and they need training on SharePoint. They don't know yet either. Uh, do you want a motion to adjourn? Yes. Oh, yes. I make such a motion. And I second it. Motion made and seconded. Everybody in the. Okay. So, 4, 3.30, we have adjourned. <laughs>